Hello and welcome to See the Light, a DL card using a gel press with me, Emma Jo. So I'm starting here with a Bob Long gel press and I'm using some Lavinia Stamps acrylic chalk paint jet black. I've just popped a little bit on my gel press and I'm using the brayer to just spread it out for me. There we go, cleaning my brayer quickly and laying over some of the crafting yarn. Now, I've chosen the Multicolor Brights because there's some lovely textures in there. And then the next step, once I've made some lovely shapes with them, is to pop some DL Multifarious card over it and take a quick print. Now, I'm not worried about the fact that one side appears to not have lifted. That's fine, we can work with that. So again, using some of the chalk paints, this is Honey Bee. And I've just brayed it all over. And as you can see, I'm going to take some of that off and keep brayering. And you can start to see some of the lines of the yarn underneath. And I'm going to take a print using some more DL Multifarious card. Just give it a little massage. And look at this. How interesting. So I'm going to try and brighten some of that up with some of the Gansai Tambi gel, gem colours using my spray bottle and just adding some water to it. And I'm going with the idea of this being the sky. So I'm using that lovely blue. And it works so nicely because you get the different tones when it's going over the yellow and then different again when it goes over the black that's already there. So if we imagine that these lines are part of the landscape, I'm filling in some of the bits with just a touch of green, which is what's so wonderful about these gem colours, is that they just give a hint of a colour. It's not overpowering, it's just working with what's already there from our honey bee. And that is the lovely gold so rich on top of that yellow. So again I'm trying to balance, bearing in mind I've got blue in the top, I'm going to put blue closer to the bottom so that it all starts to balance out. Now this is the lovely gold and if you think that that blue at the top is the sky then it stands to reason that somewhere along there you'd have the golden sun and this is what I'm doing. I'm picking out bits that might be hit by some beautiful sunlight. Now I've taken a little bit of the pink from the gem colours and I'm adding just a touch to give a lovely warm feeling to that centre yellow field if you like. And another touch of green just at the bottom. And look at the way that's starting to lift. So with a little bit of that gold again at the top. Where the sun would hit. And it really makes that yellow look so rich. It's wonderful. Now make sure that your work is dry. So give it a quick blast with your Ranger Heat tool before you start adding any accents and in this case I'm making one of the ribbons that has a lovely texture to it into a fence with an aqua green Posca pen and then adding some white highlights with a white Posca pen. And then using a kuritake clean colour real brush pen. That's a dark green. I've just added a little bit of shading underneath where you would imagine it would be darker. Now this is an apple green Posca pen and I'm just going to go around one of the fields. Then you've got your aqua green again up near where the sun was hitting the top of that hill and we're just going to add some stripes. That's what I love about this. You can get some wonderful effects just using um, spots, stripes, even um, 
Oh, what do you call it? Embroidery sort of uh, stitches. If you imagine you're doing a running stitch or um, chain stitch or blanket stitch, it can be really effective. There we go. So I've done some horizontal lines at the bottom, adding some more aqua green, which just makes everything pop. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And then we've got some green circles going across that field. Don't all have to be the same size. They can be some large, some small. Just following the lines that are already there. Now, taking your titanium white pan pastel, you can see the loops that I made with some sim simple thread on the gel press at the top. They're wonderful for pretending they're clouds, and that's the way I'm going. So that's why I'm using the titanium white, just to lift it a little bit and give it different definition. Okay, so now I'm doing a little bit of white on the top. If you imagine a snow-capped hill, just a little touch of it. and then adding some white to those circles in the hill lower down. Going around the outside, or in some of them I might do a dot in the middle. And then just adding some white highlights to the bottom field. Now that, that's me just going back in, making sure those shadows work for me with the Kurotaki Clean Colour Real Brush pens, and that's a dark green there. And this is that Uniball um, Gel Pen Gold Broad, and I'm just adding some lovely gold accents to those circles. So what I love about this is you can keep going, <laughs> keep going and keep going and keep going until you're happy. And the trick is not to give up. Touch a gold on the top of that hill near the white caps and then using the Zig two-way glue pen squeeze and roll, let's give it a little bit of foil, shall we? There we go, going around and making a pattern there. Imagine that's where the sun's going to hit it, so we'll want a little bit of bling. And a little bit of bling at the bottom right-hand corner as well, by the looks of it. Little dashes as well, just to lift it a little bit on the next field up. Give it a blast with your Ranger heat tool and apply your foil. And I've gone with that lovely ice blue, some gold and some rose gold. And you can see it catching the light, can't you? It's bringing, lifting it all. So there's the gold going on. Wow, I don't know if you saw that, but that sun, the swirly circle that I did, that I'm calling the sun, is really lifting quite nicely. Just adding a little bit more glue around our clouds that we've done. And I'm just adding a little bit of the ice blue fab foil. Doing some dashed lines within my 
lines. They always remind me of contours on a map, these lines, because they don't they don't actually have to they don't have to be perfect, they don't have to make sense, they just have to be a shape. And that's that's what's so great about them. They helped create a contour within your work. And look at that. I do love that. So what should we do now? Let's grab those sentiment stickers six. And you can see I make up my own sentences. And you should too. Have a go. So what have I got here? I've got something about seeing the light. And use your use your lines, your diagonal lines and your, um, if you like, your field boundaries as guides to where to put your words. And you can see. And what I always find that once you put the words on, you can put a little bit of pale grey, kuritake, real colour, real colour, clean colour, real brush pens, can't get my teeth around that, um, along the bottom, just adds a little touch of depth to it, and stops it looking like it's a sticker, and it just makes it come to life. And it also stops it from looking so busy, I think. So apply a little bit of stickle sea foam across, and look what we've got, a thoroughly blingy, beautiful card. There you have it, my friends. You did it. Well done. Well done.